or support the show, go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts. The rock on hats are embroidered. Get your exclusive merchandise now. Rock on. Era begins again. What's up, everyone? How you guys doing? This is the show I was talking about. COVID-19 from a biker's perspective. Yes, I sent out some interview questions and got them back from uh, somebody that's a real honorable man. And I think that you guys should uh, take a listen because he lived through that disease. Later on in the show, I will have a little reveal about the Harpy Warlocks. Yes, I got a freaking reveal that a lot of people don't know out there. So I think it's time to uh, cover that uh, side of the story. Uh, What I'm going to do during this uh, segment is I got to make sure that I present both sides. Uh, So I'm going to make sure that uh, you get a firsthand account of uh, somebody who actually had it. Like I said earlier, Tommy O., uh, 1% from uh, the Outlaws MC. Yes, he beat it, and man, did he battle. He battled. So, you know, that goes to show you that, you know, because Tommy, he's freaking, he's working out. He's in all the nutrition, vitamins and stuff, and it can hit you, and it can hit you hard. Uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that I think is confusing people is, is the reporting of the numbers all the you know everything's confusing coming from the government personally i don't think the government's handled it too damn good uh you got one thing going on at the federal level you got one doctor saying one thing then another then another he keeps going back and forth at first you shouldn't have wore face masks because you know it uh, actually could uh get you to get the virus or something like that he said and now all of a sudden you're having all these mandates for masks i know illinois has one uh you know with the mask question it's basically to me it's like helmet laws it's your right to choose but (laughs) don't come around me if you don't wear a mask man that stuff is like you know you put out the sign of the cross by a vampire just stay away from me i don't want nothing to do with you uh i think that's because i have underlying conditions and stuff uh but when you really think about it the age group that people are getting hit with this it's real deadly to uh, you know seniors and right now uh the numbers are coming out that even kids are starting to get this stuff hey, here in illinois uh again the numbers are messed up out they're attributing to covid19 deaths that have nothing to do with it and i think that's why you know a lot of conspiracy theories go out and people start saying you know what you're bsing one of the biggest lessons i have learned about this though one of the biggest lessons you know i think everybody was locked up for what two months and stuff two months then i started thinking to myself damn man what would everybody do during a nuclear war or a real hardcore type of biological attack if you guys can't make it through two months man something's wrong that's why i always say the preppers were always right about this prep 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 but people going bonkers just with two months and it's not even being confined to your house and stuff yeah businesses were closed but being confined and everybody's going batshit crazy out there so i don't think if there was a real hardcore type of a uh, event a lot of people wouldn't be able to deal with it wouldn't be able to deal with it that's one thing i learned what do you guys say about that uh how's your state response now i know down south in florida and texas now it's a real hotbed as well as arizona i guess it's getting so bad in arizona that they're actually shipping people to new mexico hospitals this thing ain't a joke i you know i actually knew somebody very close to me who caught it him and his daughter and i talked about this before it ravaged him ravaged him 
and he's actually in a rehabilitation center right now, and they don't think he's going to get his lung capacity, you know, the way it was. And he wasn't even a smoker. And what I find real interesting about that, you know, depending on what study you're talking about, because there's so many damn conflicting studies out there, it, it's unreal. But I guess with the smokers who get it, and I again, you got to look at the study and you got to get your own information. I'm not a doctor. I'm not giving you medical advice. None of that stuff. But I guess with the smoke in smokers' lung, because they're kind of inflamed and you know whatever them little hairs die off, and I guess the virus can't penetrate that stuff. Hmm. And another uh, good one, you know, you got Max back there with his weed hat on. I guess CBD oil, yes, CBD oil is coming out and it's really helping fight off this the disease because it has anti-inflammatories. So, you know, take it as you will. We're going to give both sides and it's coming from a biker and you decide what you think. Now, again, I know there's going to be people that say, well, it's nothing but the government lying to you. Until you catch that crap, man. Until you catch it. So, we're going to go in and I'm going to read off the, the questions that I sent him. And he'll give the answers to it. And then after that, uh, we'll have our mid-roll with uh, Bagger Syndicate Cycles. And then uh, I'll present uh, some studies, the government side, all that good stuff. And have that interesting thing to talk about at the end of the show. Let's get going. Okay, one of the main reasons why I wanted to get a biker, uh, a one percenter that actually had this disease was to pass on the seriousness of it. You know, I figured if bikers heard from another biker how they went through it, how it affected them, how it still affected them, maybe people might have uh, smartened up a little bit and start taking this stuff serious. So... The, I'm going to read the questions, then I'll give you the answers from Tommy O1%. Uh, the first one I sent over, I believe it's important that other writers are educated regarding this COVID-19, particularly the seriousness of it. What are the symptoms that you experienced and what was the intensity of the symptoms? He wrote back, first symptom was feeling very tired almost like I was on cold meds. By the next day, I had a fever and felt like a cold, but quickly the aches and pain set in, then I had trouble breathing. I was in bed for six days with a fever and all the symptoms. On the sixth day, I started coughing up blood. That's when I was taken to the hospital. But you know what scares me about any of those and anybody who's ever had respiratory diseases like bronchitis is when your O2 sats go way down. That scares the hell out of me when you can't breathe. I think that has to be one of the worst symptoms of any disease. But, uh, you know, that's how it started off for him. Many people, and this is coming from me, many people claim that this virus is nothing more than the flu. Living through this virus firsthand... What would you tell those people who say this kind of thing? Answer, they don't induce you into a coma for the flu. Now, I think that's very poignant right there. And, you know, the ICU beds are starting to fill up again. Like I said, down south, it's starting to become a hotbed down there. And you know what? He has a huge point. The flu, they don't induce you into no coma. Uh, that's, you know what? Inducing in a coma, man, that's scary stuff right there, not knowing if you're going to wake up or not. Uh, at the time of getting COVID-19, you were strong and healthy, something the government said wasn't a high-risk group. And, you know, later on in the show, I'm going to go over what the government says is high-risk groups, see if you fall in that at. Uh, do you think this is the reason people are not taking this deadly virus serious when they say, quote, it only affects those with pre-existing conditions? I was healthy as a fucking horse, end quote. 
Answer. At the time, I was working out three to four days per week and had no underlying conditions. He ate healthy and took vitamins like I was, you know, discussing earlier. And even though you're working out, you know, I work out, uh, what is it, five or six days a week. And even though I'm taking the vitamins and stuff, I'm paranoid, man, of this stuff. And it has nothing about uh, the tinfoil hat crap. You know, after seeing what I seen and how it affected somebody I cared about, it's like, yeah, I'm not playing. Nope, not taking the chances of that. Uh, my fourth question was, you had to fight for your life after getting stricken by this virus. How has this changed how you look at the situation where people still don't take the basic precautions of not washing hands or even wearing a mask. It's funny, I say, uh, washing your hands. You know how many times, say you go into the store, you're taking a leak and stuff, and then you see people just walk out, they don't wash their hands. It's like, really, dude? You disgusting pig. You know, you just get, you know, we're touching your sweaty balls or something, and you're not washing your hands. Putting your dirty hands on the damn freaking door handle, opening the door. Nasty asses. Anyway, uh, his answer was, uh, yeah, I fought hard. He did a month, a month in ICU. Now, I see you some scary damn crap, man. I've seen people in ICU, and it's like, you know, you're teetering on, you got one foot in life, one foot in death, that whole nine yards. He did 15 days of it in a coma. In a coma. You know, one interesting thing I should have asked him about the coma is, you know, you're out of it. I, you know, I always wondered about if you can hear people around you or, you know, it's totally blank. You don't know nothing. Uh, that kind of stuff, man. I'd really be interested in hearing about the comas. You know, you got that... Uh, you know, life, death experience type of stuff. I'm interested in that stuff. Anyway, those people not taking basic precautions are fucking idiots. When someone protests with something that can cause them, cost them their lives or their family and friends, they are not playing with a full deck. If they don't like the mask, and I love this one from them, if they don't like the mask, They'll hate the ventilator. Them va ventilators are something else, man. Uh, those are the ones where, you know, they stick the tube down your uh, throat to get into your lungs, get you breathing. They actually has to breathe for you. I've seen that done on some people. Uh, expanding on that question, do you think mask and using hand sanitizer is enough of a precaution to ward off the virus? A, I'm not sure if it is enough to ward off the virus, but it raises your chances just by a small percentage. You'd be a fool not to take these precautions. Rock on. <laughs> you got that. 1% has always been <clears throat> good by me. I like that one. That's cool. Uh, six, recently there has been an uptick in a reoccurrence of the virus especially in warm weather states and it is you know florida texas they're thinking even about shutting down again because it's getting so bad and the bed capacity for the icus is just going out of the it's actually they're talking this is the second wave and it's getting worse than the first wave uh let's see here Recently, there has been an uptick, uh, especially more, okay. From your understanding, do you think heat has any effect on the longevity that the virus can stay alive? And his answer was no. I don't think heat has shit to do with it, as was first explained. My doctor told me it thrives on your body temperature being high. Interesting. I was out of it, but was told I was basically packed in bags of ice to regulate my temperature because the cooling blankets were not working. Now, see, that is very interesting. Now, if you look on what's going on, uh, I'd be interested. In, I should have looked up some stuff in Australia because it's really hot over there and uh, look at their counts. But 
you know, Tommy 01% has a, a point. The temperature started skyrocketing, and, you know, in uh, even Illinois, oh, my God, it's 100 degrees today, and the virus count's going up. So it's having the opposite effect of other viruses. It's actually thriving when it's hot because other viruses are usually weak and they die off in the heat. Not this one, man, not this one. And being packed in bags just to keep, oh, man. Seven. The city of Sturgis, and this is a question I answer, uh, asked of them, recently came out and said that 80, the 80th annual rally will be going on as planned. First off, what would you say to people who are thinking about attending it? Secondly, if people are thinking about attending it, what precautions should they be taking to avoid getting it? Tommy O one percent's answer. First off, I believe by then it's possible they will cancel the event, and it hasn't been canceled. Actually, the you know when I sent out Tommy one percent these questions, it was uh you know about a month ago, uh, and Sturges wasn't decided on, but it has uh, decided to go on. Uh, secondly, for those who are attending, well. And I'm sure people will go even if it was canceled just to prove some point, whatever that may be. Wear a mask, wash your hands, and practice social distancing. <laughs> you got that point good right there, man. Again, I don't. if people don't have a mask and uh, they try to come up to me, it's like, okay, fist bump from six feet away, okay? Get away from me. Just, I don't want the crap, man. Uh, uh -uh. Anyway, eight. How, with how serious the virus hit you, do you think Sturges and other major rallies should go on, or do you think people need to slow down and wait for a vaccine? A. Answer. I understand businesses, both small and corporate, need to be open to avoid going broke. But on the other hand, these promoters and businesses have an obligation to the health and safety of their employees, attendees, and families of all involved. As I told my boss at work, quote, if you're alive, you can rebuild. If you're dead, you're just fucking dead. People, bo uh, people, both attendees and businesses need to look past this shit about it's about the government telling us what to do. I do not agree with the government in general and won't go there because that's another subject. But at least they are looking out for public health. Or at least most of them are. And again, that's another subject. Rock and roll on that one, man. I really like that answer. Uh, talking about a vaccine, do you have any confidence that it will work? Now, the talk of a vaccine is really, you know, it kind of scares me a little bit because they got to rush to get it out. And I remember... You know, when they were trying to fix my meds with the epilepsy and the seizures and all that kind of crap, I would never, never take anything that was just put out and it didn't have five years of numbers on it. You know, they were trying to put me on Vimpap, which was a European drug that just came out. It's like, really? Test that some, uh, some more people and then, you know, get back to me. You know, that's one thing that I worry about with uh, the vaccine for this virus is everybody and their mother is trying to get it out there and it's not being tested enough, not correctly, if you ask me. And some of the, uh, the tests that have come back on human trials, it's only at like a 60% uh, rate, man. That's not good. Uh this is, you know, I was talking about this. It's especially worrisome since the flu vaccine is a shot in the dark of working on a particular strain. You know, there's different strains of the flu and, you know, they try to, you know, they throw a dart at a dartboard to see, okay, we're going to put this vaccine out for the year. Let's see if this works. You know, that type of deal is where I was getting at. Hell. There isn't a cure for the common cold, and as you said, the flu vaccine is a shot in the dark. But we've got to hope it works. There's always got to be hope, I agree. Believe me when I say this, our country needs hope in these times. 
Right on, rock on. Uh, then I go with small businesses. I kind of go into small business stuff, uh, especially businesses like bars and gentlemen's club have been hit hard by this epidemic. What are your thoughts on how this will affect the future operations of them? And Tommy O one percent answer is uh, in these times for bars and gentlemen's clubs, it's all about reinventing the wheel. You know, kind of like you know the drive-through strip thing, and you know he's selling burger, uh, burgers, and he's selling broads. I love that one. Uh, as you know, I am uh, the GM in one of the largest gentlemen clubs in New York. We've had to follow the state mandated rules to be open, and it's a pain in the ass reminding dancers and customers to have their mask on. But here you can be fined five to ten thousand dollars, holy cow, or given a cease and desist order. If you don't reinvent your business in this industry, it very well could be the, the thing of the past. Wow, five to ten G's, man. I'd be, I'd put on the, uh, have just somebody going around, hey, put your mask on, put your mask on. I'd have them walking back and forth, that kind of thing. Uh, you do, you know, a lot of the dancers make their money that way too. You got to look at the, the employees and yeah. Uh, Eleven. Let's take a gentleman's club, for example. What precaution should the business take? And furthermore, what precautions should uh, the patrons take to be safe? Now, listen to this uh, answer. You know, this is the kind of stuff you might want to look at because uh, Tommy 01% is a GM of one of the biggest dance club on the East Coast, and he knows what he's talking about. As I mentioned earlier, wear the mask, social distance, and practice personal hygiene. It is what it is, and if we keep spreading it, it's going to stay that much longer. For the customers that don't like it, don't come. Unlike the rest of the country protesting the mask, it's a must for the businesses to be open. And here in Illinois, it is. Uh, on a personal note, and I don't give a fuck who thinks what, I truly believe bars being open is a mistake. It's hard as hell to keep drunks in line, let alone make sure they are following the mandates. Oh man, that has to be one of the best answers to this whole thing right there, man. <laughs> that, you know what, he has such a point, hard to hell to keep drunks in line, let alone make sure they are following the mandates. You know what, that is so freaking true. Finally, how's this experience changed how you go about your daily life? Meaning, do you find yourself making sure to social distance more than you used to or making sure to stay clear of those who don't wear masks? And his answer was, I worry about being reinfected every day. And I guess you can get reinfected. Yes, you got antibodies and stuff, but that only lasts for a certain time. And that's what it's, another thing that's so scary about this virus is you can get reinfected real quick. It ain't, you know, slam, bam, thank you, man, uh, come again later. No, you can get reinfected. Uh, I wash and disinfect my hands like I have an OCD issue with it. I wear my mask even though I have permanent lung damage, and that's one of the things the virus does to you is that permanent lung damage, man. I distance myself from people, and if they have no mask on, I stay away. There is a close circle that I socialize with, but you still never know who or what they've been exposed to. Very, you know, very true. It sucks, but this isn't the world we once knew, at least not at this time. I know a few other motorcycle clubs that have lost brothers to COVID. We live our lives on the road, and even though freedom isn't free, we live our lifestyle not giving one single fuck what society thinks. We've had to make exceptions and cancel uh, functions. Face it. Nobody wants to be responsible f uh, for infecting a brother and possibly killing them. As it is for anything else, be part of the solution and not the, the problem. Tommy 01% uh, Outlaws Motorcycle Club. Uh, you know, I learned more in that question and answer seg uh, segment 
from him actually having it than I've learned from all the media or all the government you know postings the CDC because I've been following it closely uh, I'm uh, you know what I'm kind of like you know what uh, yeah bars ain't necessaries don't close my gym because I need it uh, but I've never been a drinker anyway again it, it, it's freedom of choice but you have to think about what you're gonna be bringing home to your own family Say you're ta you know you're taking care of an elderly mother or father or a brother or sister has a condition god forbid cancer and you bring that stuff around and I really you know like when he I like it when he said you know the clubs had to cancel some of the functions because of what's going on uh, that takes a lot for an MC to do that type of stuff especially national ones because that's, you know, they're living the life every single day. So that is, you know, from Tommy O1%, a guy who actually had it, had it, 15 days in a coma. And again, them ventilators ain't cool, man. They stick that stuff down your throat and your lungs, and it, 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 the ventilator is actually the one breathing for you. Now, that is scary. I don't know about you guys, but my biggest fear, again, was with the breathing problems, but drowning, man. Can you imagine that? And I've, you know, you do look at some of the x-rays that some former patients have had, and it's like they're drowning in their own uh, fluid. That is what's scary. And what's even scarier about this, you know, I can go into the conspiracy theories. All oh, you know, China released this because it's a, an election year. It came out of a bio lab, which, you know, it has been, uh, it came out of the Wuhan, uh, one of their laboratories. It got out in the public and just spread from there. Okay, that's how it happened. But how do we prevent it? And how do we prevent it from getting to the ones? that we love you know how would you feel given like he said giving it to one of the brothers and they die for from it you know very interesting stuff man i'm telling you very interesting stuff let's go to our mid roll and then i'll uh, get on the other side of uh the discussion with the numbers and all that good stuff. Hey guys, hey guys. Carrie, Carrie, Carrie here with Vegas and Cycles. Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to baggersyndicatecycles.com and check it out. Mwah. Right now, as of today's recording, which is 726, now, I'll go over just Illinois cases right here, then I'll flip over to the U.S. Uh, in Winnebago County, there's 3,486 with 115 deaths. The biggest contributor to Illinois' problem is Cook County, which is Chicago. Uh, 102,000 with 4,829 deaths. Right now, the confirmed total in Illinois is 172,000. That's up by 1,426. The deaths in Illinois is 75,93. That's up by 12. Now, let's go to uh, the cases nationwide. And this, you know, these numbers are mind boggling. So for those who say this is fake and this and that, or the flu has killed more people, I think you're freaking smoking better stuff than I have. Uh, again, as of today's recording, the total cases right now in the United States is 4,163,892. That's 64,582 new cases. Total death stands right now in the United States at 145,942. That's reporting from yesterday, 929 new deaths. Now again, I'm gonna, I, I know people that well they're misreporting the numbers, and you know what? I'm gonna cover that part. But as we got it right now, that is what they're saying. Now there's a map of the COVID-19 cases reported uh, by the U.S. Uh, states, District of Columbia, New York City, and other U.S. affiliated jurisdictions. 
And right now, 40,001 or more is in Texas. They got 375,846. Florida, they got 409,000. Let's go up to New York. New York has, uh, let's see here, 220,000. So, you know, that used to be the epicenter. Now, it's not. It's the South. Uh, Cali is at 445,000. I talked about Arizona. They're at 160,000. You got to remember, Arizona don't have a big population. Yeah, you got Phoenix and all that stuff. Uh, Illinois, we're at 171. Wisconsin, 51,715. Uh, so the cases are really up there. The really only ones that aren't that bad is North Dakota for the whole entire state. But again, it's population. Uh, the death by uh, jurisdiction, Illinois is one of the tops. Then you got uh, Florida, Cali, and then uh, New York, Pennsylvania. A lot of stuff going on uh, there. Uh, so that's the numbers right there. Now, you know, let's give some educational material of how it spreads. Uh, it's thought to spread mainly from person to person, yes, mainly through respiratory droplets produced when an affected person coughs or sneezes. These droplets can land in the mouths or noses of people who are nearby or possibly be inhaled into the lungs. Spread is more likely when people are in close contact with one another within about six feet. Now, you know, I've seen some maps where it talks about, well, if you're in a shopping aisle, it flows through the air and it's more than six feet, but six feet should be the minimum. It may be possible that a person can get COVID-19 by touching a surface or object that has the virus on it you know i'd be interested in knowing uh you know how long it can be on a counter i know hep c that's a very resilient uh virus that can live up to 14 days on one uh again it can go you know you touch your mouth your nose and your eyes to get it to go down that way uh now the incubation period from the time of uh exposure to the time the disease comes on uh it's thought to extend to 14 days with a median time of four to five days from exposure so uh, you know the median times four to five days one study reported that 97.5 percent of persons of uh with covid19 who develop symptoms will do, do so within 11 and a half days of sars cov2 infection Who's uh, most at risk? People of all ages can be uh, infected by the new coronavirus. Older people and people with pre-existing medical conditions, asthma, diabetes, heart disease, way up there. And again, Tommy O, 1%, he was up there. He was working out. He was healthier than a horse. And it, it affected him. And it put him in a coma for 15 days and ICU, you know. Uh, I'm not going to say who uh, advises people of all ages because there's a lot of freaking controversy around the who and I don't re you know I don't recognize that organization uh, the vaccine status there's currently no vaccine to prevent coronavirus uh, 2019 the best way to uh, prevent the illness is to avoid being exposed to the virus one good thing uh and there is local and national emergencies right now. It talks about Illinois. Uh, one good thing is people are starting to learn about, you know, washing their hands, wearing masks. So the flu season hopefully isn't that bad this year because you combine the flu, which was pretty bad last year with COVID-19. Not 2020 is not a good year. That's what I can say. We need some aliens to come attack this or something, man. Uh, but let's get on to the questions of how they're reporting it and what, you know, why people think the way they do in a conspiracy sense or why they don't believe this or believe the government. Let's get into that real quick. Uh, and it, you know, one of them questions comes as uh, Fox 35 investigates questions raised after a fatal motorcycle crash listed as COVID-19 death. Yeah, that's what's getting people going. Let's listen. Come on, load it up. 
Ann Sorrell, we start with big breaking news tonight. Fox 35 questioning the coronavirus numbers and uncovering a shocking revelation. A man dies in a motorcycle crash, but his death listed as a coronavirus death. Fox 35 News investigating. We dug through the data and then we asked the questions. Fox 35's Danielle Lama joins us live from Orange County tonight. Danielle, how are officials explaining this? Well, Charles, they really haven't given us much of an explanation at this point. The way we found out is I was asking the county health officer about two coronavirus deaths involving people in their 20s and whether they had any underlying conditions. Then one of his answers surprised us. The first one didn't have any. Uh, he died on a, in a um, motorcycle accident. New questions tonight about the accuracy of the state's coronavirus death numbers. Orange County Health Stand Officer up. Dr. Raul Pino telling us one person reported to have died from COVID was killed in a motorcycle accident. So was it removed from the data? I don't think so. I have to double check. We were arguing. We were discussing and trying to argue with the state. Not because of the numbers. I mean, it's a hundred. It's not make any difference if it's 99. But the validity that the fact that the individual didn't have, didn't die from COVID-19, dying in a crash. But you can actually argue that it could have been the COVID-19 that caused him to crash. So I, I don't know the, the conclusion of that one. We looked into it and there are still two people in their 20s on Orange County's data list for COVID deaths. So is this a contradiction to how the state says it's counting deaths? The Florida Department of Health sending Fox 35 a statement saying a COVID death is determined if COVID-19 is listed as the immediate or underlying cause of death or listed as one of the significant conditions contributing to death or if there's a confirmed COVID-19 infection this is for from a Florida, lab test like. and the cause of death doesn't meet exclusion criteria like trauma, suicide, homicide, overdose, motor vehicle accident, etc. The only thing that I could say to people is that the data that I'm providing you with is the data that we consume from the state and we are offering you to the best data that we have. And Dr. Pino tells us that the medical examiner's office has to sign off on all COVID-19 deaths. We also reached out to that office and have not heard back. So something like that is confusing the hell out of a lot of people. And that's what gives rise to, uh, you know, well, the government's doing this. Don't believe the government. This ain't as bad as the flu. It's the same type of thing. You know, that's where this comes from. And I looked up another story from the Atlantic. How could the CDC make that mistake? The government's disease uh, fighting agency is conflating viral and antibody tests, compromising a few crucial metrics that governors depend on to reopen in their economies. Pennsylvania, Georgia, Texas, and other states are doing the same. Alexis C. Mangrel and Robinson Meyer wrote this. Uh, and they have an editor's note here. The Atlantic is making vital coverage of the coronavirus available to all readers. And then they got a collection thing. And then it starts out, uh, you know, distorting several important metrics and providing the country with an inaccurate picture of the state of the pandemic. Uh, they learned that the CDC is making at best a deliberate mistake. Now, you know, a deliberate mistake, man, that's what's scary. And then you give that side of the argument to the people that say, oh, I don't want to wear a mask and you're just doing what the government tells you to do. Again, to me, it's personal choice like a helmet. Do it or don't. Just stay away. <laughs> Uh, combining test results that diagnose current coronavirus infections with test results that measure whether someone has ever had the virus. The upshot is that the government's disease-fighting agency is overstating the country's ability to test people who are sick with COVID-19. Have you guys... Uh, uh, let me know if you guys have got a COVID-19 test and how long it takes, you know, for you to get your results. The agency confirmed to the Atlantic on Wednesday that it is mixing the results of viral and antibody tests enough, though the two tests reveal different information and are used for different reasons. This is not merely a technical error. 
States have set quantitative gu guidelines for reopening their economies based on these flawed data plans. Several states, including Pennsylvania, the site of one of the country's largest outbreaks, as well as Texas, Georgia, and Vermont, and I believe in Texas, correct me if I'm wrong, they shut down bars, they're re-going to lockup, are blending the data in the same way. Virginia, likewise, mixed viral and antibody test results until last week, but it reversed course and the governor apologized for the practice after it was covered by the Richmond Times-Dispatch and the Atlantic. Uh, this is going on in Maine, uh, all over the place. The right, widespread use of the practice means that it remains difficult to know exactly how much of the country's ability to test people who are actively sick with COVID-19 has improved, though. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Ashish uh, Jha, the KT uh, Lee Professor of Global Health at Harvard and the director of the uh, Harvard uh, Global Health Institute, said, you've got to be kidding me. And he told them when described what the CDC was doing, he goes and asks, how could the CDC make that mistake? This is a mess. Viral tests taken by no swab or saliva sample look for direct evidence of a coronavirus infection. They are considered the gold standard for diagnosing someone with COVID-19. The disease caused by the virus, state governments consider a positive viral test to be the only way to confirm a case of COVID-19. Antibody tests, by contrast, use blood samples to look for biological signals that a person has been exposed to the virus in the past. So they're right, there's two different things that they're doing here and they're screwing it all up. A negative test means something different for each test. If somebody tests negative on the viral test, a doctor can be relatively confident that they are not sick right now. If somebody tests negative on the antibody test, they have probably never been affected with or exposed to the coronavirus. Or they may have been given a, a, a false result because there is uh, false positives happening right now. Antibody tests are notoriously less accurate on an individual level than the viral test. So, you know, the problem is that the CDC is clumping negative results from both tests together in its public reporting. You know, the CDC, man, you're like handling it like the walking dead right now, man. Uh, a lot of people depend on the CDC to get it right, and they're just screwing it up. <laughs> Now, I can see both sides of the argument from this is just like the flu or I've known people who actually had it. So I see, you know, this is a serious disease. You need to take it serious, especially if you have underlying conditions. I take it very serious. That's why I wear the mask because, you know what, I don't care what anybody says and makes me feel protected. Uh, you know, me, I wash my hands all the time. Again, I talked about people who take a piss, they won't wash their hands, but especially now, take care of your hygiene, man. Don't be such a slob. On the other hand, I can see the other argument just by some of the stories that I read or presented just now, and especially that one news report down in Florida, how they're mixing up everything. How can you report a motorcycle accident as COVID-19? You know, there's a joke on the other side that said, oh, somebody fell out of a plane without a parachute. They listed it as COVID-19. You can see, you know, there is evidence that this is happening. The CDC, again, has really screwed this up. They're supposed to be the main federal agency that is on this they're supposed to be the best of the best in disease they're the experts on everything again who i don't you know what they're not the united states uh you know department so i don't listen to anything out of the united states any damn way you know i might read studies from say italy or england or australia 
but never, you know, from somebody that's on China's tail. So the numbers are getting staggering. This second phase is something else. And I know as bikers, we love going to bars. Well, you guys do. I don't like bars that much because I always get in trouble at bars. Uh, but that's a, a spreader right there because like Tommy 01 percenter said, you can't keep drunks in line half the damn time, so how the hell are you going to follow the rules? And I really take it from him because he's a GM of one of the biggest freaking uh, gentlemen's clubs on the East Coast. So this man knows what the hell he's talking about and add on the fact that he went through it. Can you imagine, you know, I can't even imagine because I love working out, I do my thing, I you know, I finally got healthy and stuff over that freaking epilepsy stuff, uh, taking the vitamins, doing this, doing the creatine, the way, and the think that it affected him, that is a wake-up call. Because somebody of his stature, he's an honorable man, he's truthful, he ain't going to BS you about his experience. So that's why I think bikers should, you know, take a lesson from him, put all that government crap aside, and I think he was right to say so, that's a different subject. Personally, again, I don't think any of the governments, you know, your state or local or your federal, has done right by everybody. Some governments might have just went overboard. A lot of people are saying, well, if you give up one right, you're going to get another one taken away. And then I come back to say, well, you know what, um, you know, I'm glad this ain't a nuclear fallout or something because two months is two months. You can't handle it. Uh, you know, you may want to go over to one of the preppers channels and learn a little bit about prepping, uh, especially city guys, man. You know, I came from the city of Chicago and I talked to friends back there and they're like going stir crazy right now. Uh, because of some of the restrictions and some might be put back in place uh, uh, bars uh, the only one I don't like is the health club one uh, and you know right now Walmart's uh, all that stuff is requiring mask but just think about it uh, you know again before you guys say you know I'm pushing the government crap it's just like that other video you idiots you know, when I brought up uh, the Rico thing, you know, I was putting examples out there and, oh, he said this. He, you know what? You're morons. Anyway, uh, just take it for your personal safety. You know, yeah, take it under advisory what they're trying to tell you. But make your own personal decision. And I think, you know, wearing the mask, the, you know, if anything, it, you know, puts a barrier between you and that virus one thing i have not heard is people who haven't had it don't understand it they're just watching the news thinking okay this is a conspiracy until they get it i've read stories about people that went to those covid19 parties or whatever the hell they are a guy down in texas 30 something years old his last words were, I should have taken this more serious. And then he died. Just think about, you know, one of the things from this disease, you're looking at permanent lung damage on a lot of people. I know the one pe person I know who had it, he's in rehabilitation, man. He'll never get his freaking uh, capacity back to breathe. I think his stats are in the 80s or something. And he's always on these breathing machines now. Why would you even want to risk that? That's one thing I don't get. Why even risk it? You know, if, again, I'll go back to that example. They don't even wash their hands after they're done pissing. So if they're not doing that, you know damn well they don't got the hygiene to wash their hands and try to keep this virus away. That's all I'm saying on that. So, you know, I presented both sides as best as I could. Person who had it, what the government's doing, how they screwed up. That way I tried to cover every angle of this debate. And I'm sure that I didn't cover everything. 
if you guys would like, I'll take one of the naysayers on as an interview. We can go back and forth. You present your numbers, I'll present my side, and we'll have a debate and a discussion about this. Because I, you know what? I really think that bikers should be taken this serious. Because most of us go into the bars where it's a hot spot, man, in them bars. And yes, I really feel bad about businesses right now. Small businesses are the ones that employ most of the people in this country. And they're really, really hurting right now. I think that's why when the stimulus stuff came down, I was freaking furious. Furious with all the pet projects these Democrats wanted to put in there. $25 million for the Kennedy Center of Arts. What's that have to do with the freaking COVID? That's the problem with our politicians. It's all about power. Instead of everybody coming together and working together to solve this problem, both of them are angling how to use this for an election in November. You got a lot of Democratic governors where states don't have spikes trying to put you under commie rule. They, you know what, it's blatantly obvious what they're doing. You know, in California, you can protest, protest, and everybody's heard this argument. Protest is good. Going to church, worshiping the man, old man upstairs is bad. Abortion clinics, that's a necessary thing they have to do. Again, churches are bad. Gun shops are bad. That's the reason why Americans can never ever come together. It's been the most polarizing type of environment in the American history, I bet. Of course, except, you know, before the Civil War. Because we can't come together because a few rich elitists want their power. And us regular Joe Americans are too stupid to understand that we're too stupid because we watch this certain news channel or this certain one instead of thinking for yourselves that's the problem in this country everybody talks about the widening gap between the rich and the middle class and the poor the only reason that's happening it's because of you you vote these people in I'll guarantee it's going to be either Party line D or party line R's come November. Why? Because people are sheep. They don't know how to look into the issues. They don't know how to hold politicians accountable. A politician should never get rich off of their position. How many multi-millionaires do we have in the Congress? How many in the Senate? You got people that are under investigation right now for selling stock as soon as this hit, this COVID-19 news. We shouldn't hold them accountable? No. Americans in the time of need come together as a country. It's not happening this time. It's just getting worse. You have these protests all over the freaking place. But that's good. Health and safety don't matter at that point of spreading this disease. See where I'm getting at? So, let me know. And by the way, the COVID stuff we sell on our website is freaking our supplier. It is COVID-19 approved. It's a cloth. It's not a respirator. It's not N95. It's a cloth one. So you to read uh, about that mask uh, from the suppliers and their statement on that on the support store. Now, final thing that's real funny. Harpy Warlocks. You know, they got a guy named Dirty Dan. You know, he was one of them guys who did the Iron Order Truth Crew. This guy's a putz and a half. Putz. He's one of your keyboard warriors who hide behind profiles and acts like an expert on everything. What did we talk about the other day about experts who hide behind profiles? If they're, if they're so inclined to put out their opinions, then do it where everybody knows who you are. 
don't hide and you know with the harpy warlocks you know i just find it funny that they got guys behind profile and trying to give advice or expose this club or that club when their own club charter in chester was taking orders from abroad and they're supposed to be one percenters or they let a whole midwest section in their thing and it was iron order by the way the ones that you know they bashed on in the Iron Order Truth crew. They bashed on them, but they let them in. But then all of a sudden, they broke off, and they're still using the Harpy Warlock's name. And you're going to tell me that you're one percenters. You didn't go collect your stuff. You didn't go and make sure they didn't use the name. Yeah, right. Uh, and then I was talking about that Rico stuff. I was just, uh, that is a predicate. That's a predicate. You could be charged. Because you did dumb shit. Because you shot a kid. For what? What was your angle? What was your game? Surely the guy I interviewed, uh, what was his name? Junior sure the hell didn't give anything. From what I hear, Junior, you knew a lot more, didn't you, buddy? But I already told you we knew everybody that was there. So, you know, watch who you take from your, you know, your fake profiles. Dirty Dan, I've heard some of your buddies even left you, man, because of your internet antics. Your internet antics. Must be something hiding behind a profile, ain't it, buddy? You fucking weakling. You know what? You're nothing but a scared-ass punk. That's what you are, dude. You know, you go out there and bash this one and that one, boy, you have a past, don't you? I'll leave it at that. But anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this segment. You got to learn a lot about this. Make sure you do your own research. Do your own research on this. Make sure you're informed. And that you don't get filled with all kinds of propaganda from any side. Your life depends on it. You don't want to be one of them that catch the virus and, you know, I get it. You know, you have a chance where it don't progress to that level. But no, many people have. It might not progress in you, but what if you bring it home to somebody? It might progress to death for them. Just letting you know. Don't forget to visit the support store. Get your shirts, your hats, your shoes, anything you want, man, to help support the show. Uh, let me know your uh, thoughts in the comment section about this. This was a real important subject. That's why I took a lot of time for it. Uh, your biker news will be returning tomorrow on tomorrow's segment. We'll talk about a bunch of stuff. Until then... I said goodbye. Oh, you Values. got it. Adios. Ciao. So long. Get your hat. Jack. Don't forget to go over to HarleyLiberty.com. Get all your motorcycle club news. What's happening in the scene? We have a new article or articles every single day over at HarleyLiberty.com. And don't forget the sister site, BikerLifestyleMagazine.com. If you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycling news, Motorcycle rallies and bikers help in the community. Motorcycle club editorials and more. And don't forget to visit us on Facebook. Get involved in the conversation. Watch videos done on Motorcycle Madhouse and more. Also, we have Instagram. Yes, Instagram. We have material that is not seen anywhere else. So don't forget, get on our platforms, check out your daily biker news. Rock on! Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel, top of the notch, all the baggers, bikers, and brotherhood. And ladies, don't you worry, we didn't forget about you. Check it out at BaggerSyndicateCycles.com. Yo show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube
YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the throttle today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!